different things in the nursery, children's church, and Sunday school, and different things like that, and working in the church. If you want to do something, all you got to do is let us know, and we'd be glad to help you out uh, as we work together in humility, thanking God that He would use us for His glory. Would you say amen? God is so good. Now, I believe in interracial marriage. I'm from South Carolina, and I married a woman from North Carolina. Would you say amen? Went up there and got her and brought her down from the hills of North Carolina. And we've been married for how many years, Mama? 37? 37? 37 years. Amen. And Lenny, she ain't left me yet. Would you say amen? God is so good. We're going to pray together and worship the Lord in giving. And God loves us, and we thank God that we can give back to the Lord today. Aren't you glad you got to hear a baby in the church today? Over there, I tell you, whining in the church, I tell you, thank the Lord. You got children, let them go. Let them crawl under the seats, run around, make noise, jump up and down. Maybe some of our older people get a little loose. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you we can give. And we thank you, Lord, you're the ultimate giver. The scripture that she just read, and he said he came obedient even to the death of the cross. Thank you, dear Lord God, today we love you. And as we give back, Lord, we give back in obedience because we've been taught the word that we know that we're to be givers, tithers, and bringing our tithes and offerings into the storehouse. God, we just bless you. Thank you for the faithfulness of every church member here, God, and everyone here who's working. We all working together, Lord, and we bless you for it. We just want to be a picture of what heaven is, Lord. And we thank you, dear Lord God. You know respect the persons. And we pray, Lord, your blessing now as we give back to you. Multiply it for thy kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Children, ladies, and gentlemen, come quickly as we worship the Lord together in giving. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I've just read a lot of stuff or I'm hearing a lot of stuff, but I'm going to tell you, my, my, my whole spirit just says that time is getting so close, so close. And I don't know if it's, it's the Lord saying it's time for me to go or it's time for us all to go. But, whew, I just think it's time for us to go to work before the shout. I long to breathe the air of heaven where pain is gone. Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets. To look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him. For all eternity, there will be a day. I said, there will be a day when all will bow before Him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with He who died and rose again. Holy. Holy is the Lord. Every prayer we prayed in desperation, the songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear. But in the end, we'll see that it was worth it when He returns. To wipe away all tears. Cause there will be a day when all will bow before him. And there will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with him.
that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith and with one voice a thousand generations will sing worthy is the lamb who was slain and on that day we'll join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith and with one voice a thousand generations will sing worthy is the lamb who was slain all forever he shall reign so let it be today we shout the hymn of heaven with angels and the saints we rise a mighty roar glory to our god who gave us life beyond the grave holy holy is the lord so let it be today we shout to him Stand together, will you please? Amen. This is our third week. We've been in Psalm 90. I don't know if you had time and you've, um, in your time at home, that you maybe have went over in that direction and you studied to see the things that are happening. Remember, Psalm 90 uh, is a prayer or song of Moses. And uh, I thank God for the word that recognizes Moses as a man of God. What a wonderful testimony. Somebody say amen. Uh, thus far in the first six verses, as we have taken our time and looked together, <clears throat> I told you I have had a desire for some time to get in the book of Psalms and look as the Lord leads us. But we learn a great lesson, and I hope you remember again today that life is short. Amen. It's brief, if anything. you here today and gone tomorrow. No matter what your age is, uh, it seems to be a short life lived, and that's why the Lord Jesus came, that we may have eternal life where there is no ending, ongoing and unending eternal life. We've already seen in the first few verses, and we know that our God's tremendous. Nobody uh, is greater than our God. Nobody can be compared to our God. We also saw that uh, our God's a tender God, Aren't you glad that God is tender with us? He's not rough with us. Has every right uh, to condemn us, but God's a tender, loving God. Somebody say amen. amen. Also, God's timeless. You know, God's on time always. He's never late for anything that we have need of. He's always on time. We also saw the sovereignty of God. That God's in control. He answers to nobody. He don't have to give an account. He don't have to give a report. He don't have to report to anybody because he's sovereign God. Somebody say amen. But also God shows us his sympathy. He loves us. He cares for us. When we sometimes do some of the craziest things you could ever imagine, instead of God uh, judging us and <clears throat> putting us down <clears throat> and chastising us, God shows sympathy. But also we looked together and saw the severity of God, that God judges sin. And we need to be aware of the truth of that today. We're going to look in verse 7 through 12 in Psalm 90. The Bible says, and remember now, this is 
Moses looking back and remembering the things that happened there in the wilderness wandering of disobedience, the things that happened. The Bible says in verse 7, For we are consumed, destroyed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if it's by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet it's their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Verse 11, Who knoweth the power of thy anger, even according to thy fear? So is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You may be seated. May God bless his holy, inerrant, infallible word. Father, we pray, God, today that, Lord, that we would have a spiritual ear. And, God, the most important thing today is that we hear from you, Lord. God, we want to learn and gain wisdom today about life and eternity. And we thank you, dear Lord God, that you have made a way for us where they seem to be no way. And we pray, Lord God, today that we'd have divine understanding. And, Father, I pray you would completely move me out of the way, Lord God. What we need to hear, Lord, is we need to hear from you. And I pray, God, that you would speak to every heart. And I pray if there's anyone here today not saved, <clears throat> the day they would surrender their life to you, Lord. And those who are watching, speak to them, God. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, and we thank you <clears throat> for the message of your word today. In Jesus' name, the church says amen. The day we move to verse 7, <clears throat> Moses begins a new thought here in these verse. Moses speaks about man's sin and God's sentence. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. This section today is divided into three sections, and we're going to look at it very closely today. First of all, we're going to see our lives are sinful. Our lives are sinful. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then we're going to see in just a moment our life is short, here one day and gone the next. And then we're going to see about how serious we ought to be about life. First of all, our lives are sinful, verse 7 and 8. Remember, this is a psalm of, of reflection of Israel's condition in the light of God in His sovereignty. That God knows everything that's going on. God saw Israel and saw their disobedience. And Moses in these first six verses spoke from the third person position, but now he picks it up in the past tense. He's looking back upon the disobedience of the people including himself. Now, as we talked about how the ten spies come back and God said, go and see the land I've given to you, ten came back and they discouraged all of Israel. But did you realize also they discouraged and influenced Moses, the man of God? Remember God told Moses, go send the spies, view out the land I had given to Israel. God said he gave it to them. Joshua and Caleb, they had favor with God. They believed God. And they said they could take it, but the majority ruled. Moses allowed the unbelieving and doubting and faithless congregation to lead him into disobedience. Listen, church, obedience is better than a sacrifice. We should obey God. Amen. All men, every man must answer to God for our own unfaithfulness. Disobedience, whether you are a child of God, a leader, a follower, whatever, disobedience brings death. If disobedience to God's Word, it stirs up doubt, and it brings disaster into the life of people. In verse 7, Moses said, For we are consumed by thy anger, by thy wrath we are troubled. The Bible says in the previous verses that they were carried away like a flood. That God moves quickly, as I told you last week. When the judgment of God comes, it don't come slow, it comes quickly. We must note the punishment of God upon those who discourage and those who disobey. 
The Bible said in Psalm 59, verse 12 and 13, For the sin of, the of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride and for cursing and lying, which they speak, uh, consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be, and let them know that God ruleth in Israel unto the ends of the earth. I tell you, it's a, it's a, it's a bad situation, uh, and it's bad uh, to be a discourager. When God says we ought to be doing, we are not to discourage people. And let me say this to you. Absence from the work of God is a discouragement. We all need to make ourselves available God has gifted every one of us. One person shouldn't do everything. We all should be working together for the body of Christ. We're all one body. Whatever part of the body you are, you ought to be doing something for the glory of God. Say amen. It's easy to sit back, stay home, whine, and complain and gripe about the way things are when you're not even in the house of God. Somebody help me preach today. Our life is so sinful, and apart from the grace of God in Christ Jesus, our Savior, we consumed by God's anger and troubled by God's wrath. The Bible says in verse 8, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, and our secret sins in the light of the countenance of God. Always know this, with God there is no such thing as having a secret sin. You can't have no secret sins. The preacher might not know. The people might not know, but God knows everything. Well, why you say that, preacher? Because Proverbs 15 and 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are everywhere beholding the evil and the good. God sees all. Moses looked back in verse 8 of Israel's troubles and says, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. I, I knew when I was looking at this message and getting ready for today, there wouldn't be a whole lot of shouting today. Because we're talking about sin, and we all sin. See, God sees what we do, and God hears what we say. Amen. And as a, 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 and as of an act of grace and mercy, God puts them right out in the open. The Bible tells us that God chastens the, those whom he loves. You can't get away with sin and claim to be a child of God. God puts our secret sins under the light of His countenance. CSI stands for God seeing our iniquities. Our sins before our God, they stare Him right in the face and cry aloud for exposure and punishment and correction. God corrects us, would you say amen? I told a good friend of mine some time back, and he'd gotten himself in trouble, and the whole community knew it. You know what I said to him? You know, God really loves you when he corrects you in the public. Would you say amen? God brings you out in front of everybody, in front of God, and God corrects you. Would you say amen? If you love your children, you're going to correct them. And it don't matter if you're at Walmart or you're at home. You correct them, amen, because you love them. The Bible also tells us that we have an advocate as a born-again believer. Don't think that because you sin that you don't have a way out. The Bible said if we confess our sins unto him, that he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all of our sin, all of our unrighteousness. The Bible says in the book of Psalm, in chapter 80, in verse 14, the Bible says, return. That's the first word. We beseech thee, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. Let me tell you something, church. God is the branch and we are the vine. And the vineyard which thy right hand has planted, and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself, is burned with fire, it is cut down, they perish yet the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. So will not we go back from thee. Quicken us, that means revive us, and we will call upon the name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. We are not have any hope apart from the righteousness and the grace of God Almighty in the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Church, we must be like 
The psalmist David, when he prayed, Search me, O Lord, and see if there be any wickedness in me, and know my heart, and try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me into the way everlasting. God leads us to repentance. Repentance is a a gracious hands of God. Would you say amen? That we sin, but yet we have repentance. We can come to God in the name of the Lord Jesus and ask for forgiveness. I tell you, when you repent, you're going in the right direction. And the truth is, our sinful lives will be justified in this life only because of the cross of Calvary. Amen, or the life to come, which one day the Bible tells us that we will have put on an eternal body, an eternal transformation. We're going to be changed in the moment, in the twinkling in the eye, and we're going to see the Lord, and we're going to be just like Him. Somebody say amen. But for the sinful and the unbeliever, they have not life and will not inherit life. They're dead and will die what the Bible calls the second death. And the truth of the matter is, if you're born twice, you die once. But if you're born once, you're going to die twice. And the Bible calls that the second death. So listen very carefully. We need to understand our lives are so sinful. We all sin. We could all do better. We don't do everything right. We're not always right. There's times in our life that we sin. Can I get a witness today? I know nobody's going to shout and jump and run because we sin. We are not obedient always to the Word of God. We don't do everything the Word of God teaches us. And if we don't obey God, we are sinners. And we need to be repentant people. But number two, our lives are very short. Verse 9 says, For our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that's told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score, yet it is their strength and labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and then we fly away. Now verse 9 here, uh, it's not written the way God had rather desired to write this word. Think about it, church. All of our days are passed away in thy wrath. Don't you think God had rather say something like this, that all of our days are as a thousand and we're enjoying the fruits of our reward because we obeyed God? Think about all the blessings of God we missed because we disobeyed God. God the Father and the Lord Jesus, our Savior, the Son of God, are about us having the abundant life. It's not making God happy that we have to be chastised because we disobedient. God had rather we have an abundant, joyful life for the glory of God, not the wrath of disobedience. Don't you think that God had rather that Israel believe God, that God had given them the land and they obeyed God and they followed God and doubted what ten men had to say, ten sinners had to say, ten doubters, ten disobedient men had to say. God had rather they went into the promised land than them suffer the wrath of God in the land of disobedience. God holds before all this He is a standard unlike the ways that the world has of a standard. God's standard is holiness. We're to be a holy people, sanctified, set apart. We're to be a people a people of righteousness. That we're seeking the Word of God. We want to glorify the Lord Jesus. We want to imitate Christ. That we live a life of faithfulness. Be faithful. No matter who around you is not faithful, be faithful. That's what God honors. Listen, there were at this time 603 million men of war uh, in Israel, men of 20 years old and upward who played the coward at Kadosh Barney. God said, go and take it. God said, I've given you the land, go get it. And fear and doubt and plagues the armies of Israel and death came. What happens in our life when we disobey God? Death comes. Darkness comes. Disaster happens in our life. Don't think it's strange when you find yourself in a disastrous situation because we disobeyed God. 
Israel's great army was under the sentence of death. Again, the wages of sin is death. Now remember here God's will for the believer. It's 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish or I will above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. God had rather you prosper than you suffer. And note here the will here of God. The desire means it's God's earnest desire that we be healthy, that we be prosperous, that we be a joyful people. This was God's will for Israel, but disobedience. And the road of disobedience blocks the blessings and the will and the purpose of God for our life. We have to obey God. God didn't bring Israel out of Egypt for them to die in a desert. God didn't save you for you to live your life in defeat. God didn't save us for us to be beat up by the world and the devil every day. God saved us that we could have joy in an abundant life. Amen. Psalm 78 is a psalm that Israel was uh, ever to tell to their children and their children's children. And we're not going to read that psalm today, but as you get home, maybe you ought to read it. And then the Psalm 90 in verse 9 says, We spend our years as a tale that's told. Note here a very important spiritual lesson that has been wrongly interpreted. Verse 10, this verse is recorded evidence of the wrath of God on Israel. Note here very carefully, if a man in that day was 20, he died at 60 years old because of God's judgment. If a man was 30, he died at 70 years old because of God's judgment. If a man was 40, he died at 80 years old because of God's judgment. Three score years and ten, 40 years. This is a symbol of judgment. 40 years of wandering because of doubt and disobedience. People say, well, I'm 70 now. I've lived the length that God has promised. No, you have not. No, you have not. That's the judgment of God on disobedience. How many years a man willing to doubt God in his plan of salvation? When you do that, it limits the lifespan and the plan that God will for all men. Let me read you the will for all men. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering, listen now, toward all, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Ain't nobody died, gone to hell in the will of God. It's God's will that all men come to salvation. And repentance is not something man comes to, but someone that we come to, the Lord Jesus. And learn a great lesson. Jesus didn't die on the cross to fulfill God's plan for sinful man. Just, listen, to grant all believers only, listen, three score in ten years. God said, I come that you may have eternal life. If you believe in me and confess in your heart the Lord Jesus, God gives you eternal life. 2 John 3, 15, an account considered that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Not 70 years, not 40 years. God gives us everlasting life. God don't put you on probation to see how good you're going to do with the gift of salvation. Somebody say Amen. Israel lived 40 years under the wrath and judgment of God in the wilderness, wandering from place to place. Alongside of them marched death. Even so, to all who ever today rejects the Lord Jesus Christ. Their reward is death. Think about it now. One by one, those disobedient fell. They were buried in the shifting sand, but could have been firmly standing on the rock of obedience if they would have obeyed God. And the wilderness became uh, one vast graveyard. Think about it now. Life is short. Moses says, for he himself and Aaron, his brothers, Israel, his pre the high priests, were both also under the same sentence of death. They were men living in the past. They had no future. And the church is not to live for the past, but for getting all things that's behind. 
pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't have eternal life, abundant life, enjoy salvation by looking back to what you used to do in your disobedience and denying and doubting and turning down salvation. We go forward because we look forward to the higher calling that we have in the Lord Jesus. Verse 10 says, A life of labor and sorrow. Why? For they had sinned once too often, and for them the grace of God had been replaced by the government, the law of God. The curse of God, the law is death. No man can keep the law. The Bible said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I begin to think about that verse that we've all heard so many times in church, that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know what the glory of God is? It's the Lord Jesus. And you know who the Lord Jesus is? He's the Word of God. We've all come short. We've all missed the mark. We all have been tempted and sinned, but Jesus, He never sinned. Glorious Savior. Our faith in God assures us life. The Bible says in the book of James, in chapter 4 and verse 14, Whereas you know not what shall be on tomorrow, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time, and then it vanishes away. Here one day, and gone the next. Would you say amen? But you know what? If you live in disobedience, you know what your life is instead of abundance and joy and peace? It's labor and sorrow. As a child of God, you can labor, you can be beaten up and, and live in sorrow instead of living in obedience. When we have disobeyed God, it brings pressure. It brings you down. It defeats you. That's why we need to be at the house of God to hear the teaching and preaching of God's Word that we do not live in sorrow in defeat. Think about it, church. Life is so sinful. And our lives are so short. But also, our lives should be very serious. It's time that we get very serious with our life. I'm not surprised the song that Brother Billy sang. I'm not surprised for what he said. Because of life. It's short. And we need to get serious about life. Somebody say amen. Verse 11 and 12 who knoweth the power of thy anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Think about it, church. Remember, we learned a great lesson already about those believing, unbelieving people and the doubting. And listen very carefully, we've got to have faith, not doubt. And where do we bring our faith? By the Word of God. We hear the Word of God. We don't grow faith by folklores and fairy tales and all these little things that people are told and to believe in this, that, and the other. We grow our faith by hearing the Word of God. Three score and ten again, it's not the blessed life God has, the judgment of God on Israel because of their disobedience. The life God promised has no limits and has no ends. Again, it's eternal life. And Moses, looking back, remember how sinful our lives are and how short our life is, especially when we're rebellious and we're stubborn. Rebellious and stubborn. You can talk to people. They might even be in the hospital, flat on their back, and you want to talk to them about salvation, the gift of God, having eternal bliss. They're so stubborn, and the heart is so hard they can't even be saved. They're stubborn. They don't want to give their life to the Lord Jesus. You cannot be saved in pride and arrogance. you got to humble yourself. When God breaks a man, a man can be saved. Think about it, church. Verse 11 and 12, Moses says, We need to get serious about life and about time. And listen, once a person is born into the world, Listen, time lights the fuse of our life, and we have better take it very serious. We know, we know the Lord's coming. We know that we got to stand before God one day. Listen, I was thinking of what it might be, have been taken uh, in your life to begin to, to get you serious about your life. What was it? 
I mean that God had to put you in a, a bad situation, in a corner to get your attention. Maybe it was a loss, a sickness, or maybe a letdown, or a wrong choice, or, or divine awakening from God. God is doing all that He can to get our attention about this life that we live. It may be good, it may have been good, but it won't last long. It won't last long. But nevertheless, the fact is, we came to ourselves. I thought about the prodigal son down there eating with the hogs. And he came to himself. Have you ever been in a place and you looked around and said, how in the world did I get here? When I know the goodness of God, how in the world did I get myself in such an awful predicament? I thought about Naomi down there in Moab bringing Ruth back. She said, I'm down in Moab. You know, Moab means a garbage dump. She left the house of bread and praise and she finds the life down in a garbage pit. That's what happens when we live in disobedience to God's Word. Things are not good and lovely and sweet. We live in a garbage pit in Moab. What Satan meant for bad, if we give it to God, he can use it for good. Even it might be in Moab. And I said, and we need to know here today, church, that First, we come by the law before we can then come by the Lord. You know, the law condemns us. And we have to admit before God that we have sinned. We have to admit before God that we, we have to admit before God that, that we need to be saved. That we're tired of living in sin. And we've got to admit before God that we broke God's law. We all have broken the laws of God. Verse 11 says, Who knoweth the power of the anger of God? Do you know God's power, His anger? The law stands us as a guilty before God in the presence of His anger and wrath. And because of disobedience and sin, and in this life, the fuse is burning. And we need to move quickly and seriously into salvation of the Lord. The Bible says the day is the day of salvation. You can talk to people who's living in the world they after the world, they love in the world, they design the world, and you can talk to them about the goodness of God and salvation, and they are, get stubborn and say, you know what, I'm not, just, I'm not ready. The Bible says you better get ready today. Today is the day of salvation. Some fuses burn slowly, and some burn quickly. The Bible says it's appointed unto man to die, and after that it's going to be judgment. But think about it, friend, life. It's but a vapor. It's but a vapor. Psalm 7, 11 says, God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day, God is angry. Every day. Amen. we got to understand here, we must respond to God now. Make it right with God today. But in spite of the truth, the world is asleep at the wheel. Think about it now. They seem to be shrugging off the need of salvation and roll over and they go right to sleep. I, I don't need God. I don't need to make a change in my life. Not acknowledging the wrath of God upon the wicked and the unbelieving. There's a day of judgment coming and we better be ready to meet God. Jesus was so calm, the Bible says, as a thief in the night and no man knows the day nor the hour. There's power, friends, in God's hands. And we need to understand that we must be prepared and we must make it right with God. Moses said in verse 10, now remember, he's talking about God's people. Who knoweth the power of his anger? Have you ever wondered when God will say, that's enough? That's it. I, I, I'm not saying for the evil and wickedness of the sinful, unbelieving world any longer. I've had it. That's enough. That's enough. That's why the Bible tells us when the Lord comes, we better be filled with the Holy Spirit. We better be full and our lamps, our lamps better be burning. In other words, our life ought to be shining bright because the Lord's coming. Life here on the planet Earth is a space and time, a dimension. It's a one-way, dead-end street. It's going in the wrong direction. Every day on this earth, hundreds, think about it now, a thousand people leave headed for eternity. Some are going to heaven and some are going to hell. Think about it. Remember, 
the Titanic for just a few moments. That great picture of this world, people drinking, some debating, some despairing. Within the Titanic was a level for all classes of people, yet all were destined to the same chilly waters of the grave. It don't matter if they were in first class or no class. It don't matter if you got all the things in the world or you have nothing. You've got to be saved. You've got to be born again. It don't, mean, it don't matter if you're a Jew, a Jew or a Gentile. It don't matter if your mom and daddy never miss church. Holy people, if you're not saved, you're going to hell. And all people are going to drown in the sin of disobedience. You say, well, all of them didn't die on the Titanic. Some escaped. Yes, they got into the life raft. Some of them made it. That's a picture of salvation. Some of them made it. The Bible said, Rod is the road to destruction. But narrow is the way to everlasting life. And few there the inner end. Only a few people made it from the disastrous situation of the Titanic. Wide. More people died than more people escaped. In verse 12, Moses, in this verse, he reveals a man who has been broken and now able to be taught. People are broken and able to be taught. You know, when people come to church and as a pastor, you know, it's important that when we come to the house of God, that we come in the spirit of humility. Uh, that we don't come in here and strut around and say, I, I got more gifts than you got, and uh, I know more about God than you do. Well, if you know more about God than I do, you're so humble, you probably won't even open your mouth. Because you know God so well, and you're trying to figure out how God can love us. And we're such sinners. I learned something, and it's the truth. There's only three people that you can help when they come to church. You can win the winnable, those who are willing to be saved. You can teach the teachable, those who are willing to be taught the Word of God. And you can lead the leadable. Some people you just can't lead. Some people don't need no leading. They want to be the leader. They want to be in charge. They, nobody can tell them everything. I, I, I know everything. I don't need to learn. I, I'm through learning. If you're through learning, you're through. Uh, when, when I studied this psalm, it, it just busted my heart wide open to think about how powerful God is and how sinful I am compared to God. Psalm 39, 4 says, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it, that is, that I may know how frail I am. We're frail. We're frail. God is omnipotent. We're only here for a little while. We're nothing more than a vapor. Life is at best. is very brief. We're not going to be here long now. We will not be here long. Amen. We're here today. Gone tomorrow. Verse 12 again says, Apply our hearts to wisdom. We need to know what the Word of God has to say, and we need the wisdom of God. The Bible said in Proverbs 2, verse 1 through 6, listen very carefully. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so thou that incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lift up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hidden treasure, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth and cometh knowledge and understanding. Faith comes by hearing the words of God. We hear the word of God. We have knowledge of God's word. And verse 1 says we receive it. God gives us knowledge as we hear the word of God taught and preached and shared in the body of Christ. The Bible says in verse 2 there, we've got to give an ear to hear the Word. we got to be here to hear the Word. Some folks think they heard enough. It's not important to be in the house of God teaching and preaching. We've heard enough. i got enough to get in. I don't need to be there. Every born-again believer or to come to the house of God, open the back doors and crawl in the house of God. Thank God for His grace and His mercy. 
We could be burning right now in a lake of fire and hell, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Folks say, I don't believe in hell. You will one day. You will one day. The Bible says that we got to cry after wisdom. That means we have to be desperate for the Word of God. We have to make sure nothing gets in our way. That we don't allow anything to, to stumble us or anything to come between us and what God has to say. Seek as the, the Bible says the Word of God is though it's a great treasure. If I told you to go home and look in a certain place in your backyard is a, a whole gold bar, you'd be there so fast you wouldn't even get a shovel. you start digging with your hands. God says we ought to dig the Word of God with a heart. Let the Word of God fill your heart. Understanding produces godly fear. Godly fear. Do we fear God today? Do we wonder all the things that's going on? Think about the life in which we live in now. Can you imagine? Can you imagine all that we face today? Who would have known that this thing flying around balloon air today wasn't full of sickness and some kind of virus or some kind of disease? Who knows? Who knows if it hadn't have been uh, blown up and the first thing you see is the Lord coming out of the eastern sky. You better be ready now to meet God. Don't think things are happening today are strange because the Lord's coming back and we've got to prepare ourselves. Man, the Bible tells us as the Lord thinks about the Word of God, He is the Word of God. Satan tipped at Him and Jesus said to Satan, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How can you keep going when people try to tell you to quit? Why are you here today? Because you've heard the Word of God. And the unbelieving doubter, the scourger, is not going to scourge you from hearing the Word of God. It makes a difference. And no what come after the mouth of God uh, originally from the heart of God. God speaks from His heart. God is a God who's concerned about our heart. We believe in our heart. We confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and then we can be saved. It's not about your head. It's about your heart. Godly wisdom is a, is a heart wisdom. It, it motivates you to, to keep seeking the Lord and to seek Him with your whole heart. Seek after God. Think about it, church. Life is very sinful. Our lives are very sinful. Aren't you glad we have an advocate? Aren't you glad that we don't stand before God Almighty with no representation? Aren't you glad that we have an intercessor? Aren't you glad that we have someone that stands and represents us in front of Almighty Holy God, the Lord Jesus? I died for her. I died for Him. He accepted me. She accepted me as Lord and Savior of their life. I washed all their sins away. Therefore, those who are in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation. Amen. We thank God today that though we sin, we have an advocate. Aren't you glad today that we have enough understanding to know that no matter what our age is today, that death has uh, anybody, no matter what your age is, anybody can die. But life is short. Even if you've been here a long time, life is a short life. It's sinful, and it's short, and we need to take it serious today. How serious are we today uh, about our life? How serious are we today to know God is our Lord and our Savior? To apply the gospel, the way of salvation. No wonder Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. He's actually said, I want you to come to the Father, but I'm the only way you can come. I paid the penalty. I paid the price that no man could pay. I paid it, the ultimate, perfect sacrifice. I am the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the universe. Church, do we understand today the shortness of our life? How sinful we could be? Let's get serious. Let's all stand together, please. Every head bow and every eye close. If we have this song of invitation, you come today. You come today. You know someone today who needs the Lord. Maybe you want to come to God and 
or open up their hearts and God will begin to speak in their lives. You think about Moses here. He's, he, he's re- remembering uh, the, the penalty of disobedience. He's remembering all those who were lost. Never made it out of the desert. God didn't desire for you to die in the desert. God wants you to have life. He wants you to enjoy life and have peace and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the Holy Spirit. I share this Wednesday night. If you keep your head bowed for just a moment. My son sent me a letter and he said, Dad, love is a choice. I said, no, son. Love is Jesus. And, and love is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And if you're a child of God, love is not a choice. It's automatic because you love everybody. You don't just love somebody or people who look like you or just your immediate family. The love of God lives in you. The love of God lives in you. And you think about it, here's a man called in the Word of God, a man of God, but yet could be influenced to go in the wrong direction. We've all, at times in our life, just like Moses, we've made the wrong choice. Aren't you glad that God's standing there? The Lord Jesus with His arms spread, with His narrow scarred feet and hands and side, and He's there for us to help us to return to the Lord. The day is the day of salvation. You come today as the Lord may lead you. Those who are watching as the Lord speaks to your heart. You come as we have this song of invitation. Come quickly. Good to you. There I was in the shadow, crying out from the pit of my despair. There you were in the shadows, holding out your hand. You made me there. story lifting me up from the ashes carrying my soul from death to life bringing me from glory to glory you are my rescue story you are you are you are my rescue story you are you are you are right in the pain Never 
gave up on me. the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You are my rescue story, lifting me up from the ashes, carrying my soul from death to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You are my rescue story. You are, you are. Rescue story. You are, you are. You are my rescue story. With the Lord, majority does not rule. Amen. The Bible says, "God be for you, who can be against you." I want to share with you this for just a moment. We're going to close. My daughter had a boyfriend one time, and he he hit her. And so I could have really took out a lot of charges against him. But because I knew his family, we took out the least charge. And so we went to court that day, and there was a young man, his mother, and a lawyer who I used to be her pastor years ago. And there stood me and my daughter. And they talked to us like we want nothing knowing this man was guilty. And there goes a no good person who do anything for money. Knowing, knowing what he did hit my daughter. I told my daughter, I said, Ma, don't you worry about it. God knows. God knows he's better than that judge. He's better than that lawyer. He's better than people. People may come against you. They may mistreat you. They may talk about you. But if God's on your side, you win every time. You win every time. Somebody say amen. amen. Father, we love you and praise you because you're God. And we shouldn't think it's strange when we fall into diverse temptations. We know, God, this world is not for us. Lord, they crucified you. We shouldn't think it's strange when they come against us. Even the ones that we love so dear. Lord, I want to thank you and I praise you. I give you glory because you're God. And I want to ask you, dear God, to help us to be mindful today when we go home. That when we go home, this life is short. It's a short life. And we need to be prepared to meet you. All of our family, all the people we know. Help us, God. Help us, God, to earnestly. It's an emergency. Like the house is on fire. Help people to come to the Lord. Thank you for this good day in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak to somebody before you leave. God bless you and I love you. We got food next door for you. Please go get it and take it home with you. Fill it up.